And this is from, well, I guess the name, well, Utada the Pink Blood Print. Hi everyone, Utada Hikaru is making me work super hard lately as we just got a ton new album news. So as of recording this, we are just five days away from getting Utada Hikaru's new album Bad Mode digitally. So for the last two albums, I really enjoyed reacting to and speculating about the track list of each album. And just a couple days ago, we did finally receive the track list for Bad Mode. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I was upset. Uh, upon the reveal, I was devastated, I was fuming. I'm fucking fuming! So I'm glad I didn't make this video on that day in particular because I have come down and accepted and I'm looking forward to the album again. So pretty much exactly what I thought would happen and didn't want to happen that I talked about in my last news video has come to fruition. So let's just go through the track list. Uh, one by one and I'll get to it. So we open up appropriately with the title track Bad Mode and another piece of news is that we are getting a music video for Bad Mode which the staff have uploaded a short version, a preview of, onto the official Utari Karo YouTube channel and I am so looking forward to seeing the music video. Um, it's not a production video like we got for Kimi Nimi Chu. It's a full-on like set and it looks very like colorful and moody so yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And on top of that, uh, of course, we heard a preview of the song Bad Mode. The song itself is not what I was expecting. It is a lot more upbeat than I thought it would, considering the title. And we have gotten some speculation on the lyrics as well. From what I can glean, or like the impression I'm getting from the lyrics, is Utada is saying that uh, bad mode kind of means more like bad mood or like a bad way where whoever she's talking to in the lyrics, she tells them that she wants to be with them whether they're in a good mood or in a bad mode. Okay, so next up we have Kimi Ni Muchu, which you can check out my last video for my review of that song. Um, and then we have One Last Kiss, of course, from Evangelion, um, very successful single from Utari Hikaru and Eiji Cook. Next is Pink Blood, followed by Time. And then sixth track we have is Kibun Janai no. It's my Korean for my Korean people. If you know, you know. Or translated, it means not in the mood. And that is the first new surprise track that we're getting. Um, following that is Dare ni mo Iwanai from the Suntory commercials. And then we will finally hear Find Love from the Shiseido campaign. And then we get Face My Fears, which we knew was coming as well. And then the last official track is Somewhere in Marseille. Um, I believe that's close to how you say it. Um, I believe it's a French word. So then we have a number of bonus tracks, uh, the first of which is Beautiful World De Capo Mix, which I did mention in my last news video that I was fully expecting to get on this album, which it turns out we did. So not at all surprised to have it on here, but not excited for it either. <laughs> and then we have Kire Nahito, uh, which in parentheses, it's noted as fine love. So what we can assume is that is the Japanese version of fine love and then the English version, fine love, is what was placed on the main tracks of the album. And then we get again, Face My Fears, the English version. And after that, Face My Fears, the AG Cook remix. <sighs> okay. So now I will tell you why I was so, so disappointed in this track list, even though I did predict some of the things that were on here. I guess I could insert the clip here. I am totally expecting the DeCapo version of Beautiful World to be placed on here as well. So again, if there's only like two original songs on this album, I'm going to be very, very annoyed. If there's only like two original songs on this album, I'm going to be very, very annoyed. So it seems like the staff and a lot of people are counting the songs um, that we've only gotten previews for as new, like surprise tracks, but in my mind, they're not surprises. Um, if we've heard the previews for Bad Mode and Fine Love, we already have a really good idea of what the song is, obviously. Like, of course, maybe later on in the song, it switches up a lot. There could be like a surprise within the song. But to me, I already know what to expect. So it's not a surprise to me when I'm sitting down to listen to the album for the first time, which is something I value a lot. And there were so many singles off this album that seeing this as the track list was very anticlimactic and it really let me down. Um, in the previous albums, there were a lot of singles as well, 
but we got enough album tracks in those cases that I still felt pretty satisfied with what we got. But in this case for Bad Mode, I felt like there was so much buildup um, with so many singles coming out that I felt like there would be more included and Utada Hikaru said that she was working on English versions for two other songs that have not made an appearance on the track list. It's my opinion that we absolutely don't need three iterations of Face My Fears on the CD release. Like, I'm confused. I'm confused too. Are you dumb? No, are you dumb? Are of course we've already had Face My Fears for th at least three years now, I think it is, or exactly three years. I think just putting one version, either Japanese or English, on the album would have sufficed, but putting both is excessive and then we also get the AG Cook remix on here, so um, that one also doesn't count as a new song to me, it's a remix. Yes, it's going to be surprised what it sounds like, but in my opinion that could have been left to streaming content, it doesn't need to become a CD track. I would have much rather have had another original song or an English version of one of the other songs that Utari Karo said that she was working on. I feel like a little bit betrayed because you went to the it's extreme and just did all this. So all of that disappointment aside, I have had some time to think about it and I am very excited to listen to this album as a whole collective together and I'm really, really in love with the singles that we have gotten as I've said many times so far and I also am really into the music videos that we've gotten from this era. I think they're pretty great. Overall, I'm not mad about this album release, but I am just disappointed in the lack of album tracks that we're getting. So now I guess I should speculate on what I think those two album tracks that we haven't heard yet, what they're gonna sound like. So, Kibun Janai no, or Not in the Mood. I feel like from the title, I'm getting this vibe of Ore no Kanojo, so maybe it might be kind of like a moody, uh, mood, moody, I know, it's like, kind of redundant there, sort of like jazzy, smoky jazz bar sort of sort of song. And then somewhere near Marseille, uh, as soon as I read that title, I started thinking of a Yunagi. So yeah, I think this is going to be uh, an expressive song with like classical instrumentals in it, um, with maybe some very atmospheric synth added. What I'm hoping is <laughs> from this short track list that we're not getting any sort of like skippable kid song like Boku wa Kuma or the cilantro song. So yeah, I think the 19th is going to be a really big day. Utari Karu's pre-recorded live performance to go along with Bad Mode is going up on streaming um, for those of you who bought tickets for it. And um, the album is coming out on streaming, digital services. And then the music video for Bad Mode is also going to be released on the 19th. So also starting on the 19th, Utari Ikaru is going to be broadcasting a radio show um, all about the production and thoughts behind the Bad Mode album as well as all of these songs from the album are going to be played during the show. I think I did see a tweet that the staff said that it would be bilingual as well, so like Utada did on the Kuma Power Hour um, shows that it will be in both Japanese and English or like at least some parts in English. Um, so that will start airing in Japan on the 19th and hopefully some uh, wonderful fans will rip it and let us hear it early. Um, and then starting on the 24th of January, an uncut version of that show will be on Spotify. So we will be able to access it that way as well. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. Always curious about the behind the scenes stuff and hopefully Utada will finally uh, reveal what pink blood means as well as their thought process behind the writing of the songs and yeah I love just hearing production stories. So if you're in Japan or if you have figured out a way to listen to Japanese radio stations online or something there is a full schedule of the broadcast and what stations are on on the official website news release and then the Spotify show is called Liner Voice Plus. So the next order of business is that the staff revealed the packaging for Bad Mode's special edition with the DVD and Blu-ray along with the CD. So originally we just saw the regular like album art with this, but the staff have revealed this kind of odd packaging, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of confused by it, um, where the discs seem to come in this like demo sort of sleeve that's very nondescript blank with like a fake shipping label on it. And it looks like there's like Utada's handwriting label on the discs themselves and then they will come with a postcard with the actual album art on them. So 
yes, very interesting packaging choice there. I will, of course, be unboxing that here on my channel in February, at the end of February, when the physical release actually comes, so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, I did mention before that it was kind of odd that this release had another version. For Utada's previous albums, they have all come with just a CD regular edition, and this is the first time that it's come with a DVD Blu-ray edition. And since I made that last news video, we have also gotten a vinyl release. So, <laughs> uh, on top of that, there is an Amazon exclusive, it appears, where the CD comes in a mega jacket, but it is not a vinyl. So it's uh, a mega jacket. I looked at the measurements. It is like halfway between a regular CD case size and a vinyl. So I have now pre-ordered this album in four editions. <laughs> the regular CD, the DVD Blu-ray, the vinyl, and the Mega Jacket. So I will be unboxing all four of those on here unless something weird happens with the Mega Jacket edition. I felt kind of like sketched out by that when I first saw it so I kind of thought like if it ends up being it's just meant to be the vinyl, then obviously I will cancel that. I believe vinyls are becoming more and more popular and that's why we've gotten a vinyl release with it right away. Whereas with Hatsukoi, it came out a little bit later. But I am feeling a little bit nervous about this release and, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because we have gotten so many different versions of this uh, CD and then also the live that is coming out that's included with the special edition or you can stream it. Um, I feel like a little bit scared that this is going to be an announcement that Utada is going on a break again or retiring. I called Maya yelling at her to take this video down. Um, and that's why they're going so hard on the music releases. I know that's a rather pessimistic way of looking at it, but I have always felt a little paranoid about this since the trauma of Utada going on the first hiatus. Um, after 2010. I don't know. I'm obviously not sure about that. That's just like my own paranoia. I haven't seen any rumors of that online or anything, but... On YouTube, you have less than 10,000 subscribers. I do think it's odd uh, that we're getting so much for this album uh, out of nowhere. Um, it kind of seems like this should have happened for like Phantom or Hatsukoi instead because you know Phantom was the comeback album and then Hatsukoi was the big anniversary album. Yeah, I think it's a little strange and I also think the live is being put out for everybody because Utada is like, I'm not touring this album so this is what you get, do not ask me to tour. <laughs> that is kind of like on my mind lately too um, and also another reason why I'm kind of upset that there's not a lot of album tracks, um, surprises, like surprise tracks, again because I've ordered four copies of the same album and I've heard 90% of the songs off of it for the past two years already, uh, or three years in Face My Figures case. Okay, so m for my final piece of big news <laughs> that has happened in uh, recent days is that Utada's Japanese catalog has been reissued in vinyl format. And a lot of us have been waiting for this day with hope and also dread in our wallets. Thankfully, I have had Sequoia up there already, as well as One Last Kiss, so I didn't need to order those. However, I have never had any other Utarikaru vinyls. Hatsukoi is the first vinyl I ever got. The vinyl listings end up being rather chaotic as pretty much the moment that the staff announced on Twitter that they were reissuing these vinyls for Utarikaru's back catalog they went on sale. Um, there was no kind of like lead up to them, so then everyone was literally scrambling to secure their copies. Uh, CD Japan sold out in about 40 minutes of every album, I believe. <laughs> I was kind of taking my time to go on and see if they were online because I didn't think they would sell out so quickly, but yeah, so I only secured a copy of Phantom and Distance. I really, really wanted Ultra Blue, of course, so I was really stressed out. I was really sad that I didn't get any of the other albums either. For some reason, Distance kept like going back into stock, like it would say it was sold out and then the, the site would say like one was available and then it, when I checked again it was like three was available and then like a few days later, um, as of yesterday, they were, there was still three copies available on CD Japan. So that was upsetting um, and what I ended up doing is jumping over to HMV Japan and my friend Matthew has ordered from them several times 
and they had all of the albums still in stock on vinyl, except for Hatsukoi. So Hatsukoi had a staggered release where it just came out, I believe, today. <laughs> so for some reason, they didn't put up the listing for Hatsukoi until today, and it too sold out immediately, which I was surprised by because it's been repressed like three times already. I was shocked that there was still a huge demand for it. So anyway, on HMV Japan, I was able to secure the other albums that I hadn't gotten on CD Japan. Um, however, if you are going to try on HMV Japan, they have recently changed their shipping policies so that um, they will ship internationally to the US and I don't think any other country outside Japan. They did used to have worldwide shipping, but it says on the site they have changed it due to COVID. So luckily, I already have a Tenso um, address or an account, so I was able to input that and I ordered the remaining vinyls that way. So yeah, I get to pay shipping on two different sites. Um, they were also up on the Japanese Amazon, but I believe the shipping for them from there was like $100. I don't know why. <laughs> so I avoided that site, but that is an option if you are desperate or you have the extra cash. And all of the vinyls also are getting a, a little bit of stagger release where First Love, Distance, and Deep River are coming out on March 10th. And then April 27th, we're getting Ultra Blue, Heart Station, Phantom, and Bad Mode. And then also, if you pre-order the vinyls, you get a sticker with each one, which I'm guessing is just the album cover is going to be on the sticker, which I'm also excited about. I'm really enjoying the sticker trend now instead of the posters. However, if they were posters of all the albums, I definitely would have taken those and like framed them and stuff. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. I definitely have to get a record player now that I am going to have like an actual vinyl collection. Yes, that was very stressful. I know a lot of people are disappointed that they missed out on certain vinyls. Um, they got certain albums, but they weren't able to get ones that they really wanted. CD Japan did restock again since the first stock those have sold out as well i didn't check the site yet today but yeah i will leave any information down below either in the description or in the comments so that you guys can check for yourselves in case you are interested in trying to get those vinyls i think that is all the news i wanted to get through today uh there was quite a lot that came out at once and my wallet is absolutely dead now so i hope Santata has a very prestigious college education in a few years i guess i'm happy to contribute to that and <laughs> I'm curious what you guys think of all these releases. Um, what do you think of the track list? What do you think of the Bad Mode music video, the song itself, um, all of the vinyl release? Did you get any? Are you going to buy any? All the different formats of the Bad Mode album. Yes, I really want to know, so make sure you comment down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time, probably with my Bad Mode review. Thank you for watching. Thank you.